already August 2nd, Crush Nation team call with Jatana. I almost feel like I don't have to say your last name. You're like Madonna or something. I just say Jatana and everyone knows who you are. But let's, before we get to Jatana, let's, uh, well, first, yeah, let's do recognition first. Who's got recognition? Anybody? You can just take yourself off of mute or... Natasha can't be here because she's at uh, Rachel Hollis with all the girls. Yeah. But we have a new Emerald coach in the house, Crystal McNaughton. Congratulations, Woo-hoo. Crystal. Good job, Crystal. That seemed fast. Yeah, she did it pretty quickly. She's been working pretty hard. Cool. Awesome. Good job, Crystal. Anyone else? I'll do a quick one. Michael. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, uh, big shout out to Melinda, hashtag Quentin Tarantino, for uh, doing Miguel Carrasco's Ignite call last night. It was amazing. She brought it. The value was awesome. So I know she was nervous as hell, but uh, she did fantastic. So congrats, Melinda. Those are those things where you just got to do it. And I guarantee you, even if it's from a confidence level, it's going to take you to another level. So she did awesome. Can we just, can we call her Quentin going forward? Would she like that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Any other recognition? I'll go if I could. Um, hey. Kim's not on the call tonight, so I'm going to take her place and congratulate Courtney Swissman for going diamond. Nice. So her, um, super big accomplishment. And I know she's worked really hard on it. So just wanted to say congrats. That's awesome. And you're next, right? You know it. (laughs) Cool. Anything else, guys? No? Okay. Uh, Before we get to Jatana, really quickly, guys. So I posted on Crush It, um, Transform 20, the challenge, get in the coach test group. You know how everyone always complains it's like only the elite coaches and people and that get into those coach test groups? Well, now's your chance. Now's your chance. Anyone can get into it. So one category is, and just go look at the Crush It um, page. You can search Transform 20 and it'll pop up. I think I posted it it this morning or yesterday. I can't even remember. Um, Categories for 2018 coaches, the highest success club point earners out of just people who signed up in 2018. They're going to pick, I think, 20 of those, get into the coach test group. This was Sean T. Okay, like you get in there in the group with him, like they get to know you. It's cool, trust me. You want to be in the coach test group. The other category is for diamond coaches and below. I think it's 40 spots. Again, that's a high success success club total for August. Third category is for uh, star diamonds and above and elite points. Okay, so that's your chance. And you want to be in this test group. It's great marketing, great promotion. Uh, it's just a really cool experience. And you get it before anybody else. So how cool is that? So... Any questions on that before we move on? We're good? Cool. All right. So let's get to Jatana Jackson. Um, I will read off her stats. I feel like, you know, everyone's pretty friendly in this business for the most part. Um, But I feel like Jatana and like Kim and all of us and stuff, like we always kind of, you see certain people that you mingle with and get along with. And Jatana is certainly one of those people that I would say we're friendlier with them. Not that we're not friendly with other people, but you just have a certain vibe with certain people. Um, Jatana is a 10-star diamond in her first CBC. In her second CBC, she's a two-star diamond. If you're wondering what a second is, it's like you get another franchise. Like you get to clone yourself and earn volume and income through that business center. So that's huge. She is a five-time elite coach, which is very, very difficult to do. I'm going to guess there's probably like, I don't know, 40 coaches that have ever hit five, maybe less, 30 that are five-star and above, or have hit elite five times. Like, that's huge, you guys. Executive leader, uh, wife and mom to Joshua and James. Um, Jatana, I will, where are you? Can't find you. I'm right here. I you can take yourself off. Thank you for being here. We're excited. Um, yeah, we're just here to, to learn and listen, and uh, thank you. I am so pumped. Oh, my goodness. So Kim spoke on my team call last night and like she dropped the mic i was like oh gosh like i've got to get it together because she did so good she rocked my world she challenged me uh, usually uh, speakers will come on my call and i'm like yes please tell them tell them everything they need to hear it again but like i was so drawn into her and so in tune with what she was saying it was incredible you guys are in such good hands 
Jamie and Kim are incredible leaders and I look up to them. I know they've been in the business a shorter amount of time, but I look up to them so much, their work ethic, um, their vulnerability with their team. It's just, it's unheard of, honestly, um, in the Beachbody community. They really do set a standard for what a team should look like. So thank you so much for having me on your call. Um, I know that our teams are kind of like our babies and we are protective of who we want to speak into our team's lives, right? And so I always hold it as a high honor when somebody is willing to let me speak on their team call. Um, so I wanna level the playing field a little bit just to kind of tell you my background and my story so you can see yourselves like Kim said on my call, there's a lot of other people in your reality. <laughs> so hopefully you'll see yourself in my reality five years ago and progressing where I am now. Um, five years ago, I stay, still a stay home mom. I had two, still two boys. <laughs> I had two boys. I still have two boys. Um, they're becoming men now and eating like whole pizzas on their own, but still. Um, I kind of lived my life with, you know, dropping my kiddos off at, one of my kiddos off at preschool. The other one was still really young and he would take a morning nap, you know, that 10 o'clock nap time. I would swing through the drive through in my swagger wagon. Yes, I had a minivan. Um, it was on a five year plan and I picked up my four count chicken mini, my large sweet Tino ice, a hash brown, and one of those awesome chocolate chip cookies from Chick-fil-A that are, it's like oatmeal. So apparently it's really healthy, right? And I would sit down on my couch and I would eat this food probably about three to four days a week, every day that I dropped them off at preschool. So it was three days a week. Um, didn't count the weekends. And I would tune in to my recorded Good Morning America. <laughs> <laughs> filling my brain with such awesomeness, right? Unless it was like Luke Bryan concert series in the summer, then it was awesome. But most of the time it was like, dun, 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 today's news. This kid was abducted and da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? All stressed out and just filling my mind with just the ways of the world, and which is a lot of negativity and a lot of drama and politics and all that. So here I am fueling my body with, Awesomeness. I mean, Chick Fil A is pretty baller, but it's not something you want to eat three days a week. And do you guys have Chick Fil A in Canada? You do? No? No? You know, oh my gosh! Good thing you're saving yourself some love handles. <laughs> it's really good. Um, but anyways, it's really popular here in the states. Um, and I would sit there and fill my brain with crap. Um, it's coming though. Debbie said it's coming. So be careful. It's so good. <laughs> and I would eat this Chick-fil-A large sweet tea, no ice. Cause I wanted all the sweet tea possible. Cause I could get ice at home and, um, fuel my brain with a lot of crap. And so compound that as we all know, compound that over two years and you get a wife who is slowly, um, I don't know, disintegrating into life not even existing, um, losing herself, losing control of what her body looks like. I've never been super overweight, but I was definitely super unhealthy. Um, probably about seven to 10 pounds out of like my goal, but super unhealthy. So skinny fat, I guess you would label it. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of hit a breaking point where I'm sitting on my playroom floor with my kids playing around and I'm miserably depressed. I mean, calling my husband at work going, if you don't come home right now, like we're going to have issues because I am so miserable with life. I don't want to exist. And those are phone calls that I don't think any husband really wants to get from their wife at home who's taking care of their two babies. <laughs> Um, and so I hit this breaking point with my kiddos crawling on me and they're playing matchbox cards and some are crying and I'm like, what am I doing with life right now? Like this sucks. This sucks. I always dreamed of being a wife. I've always dreamed of being a mom. I've always wanted this like normal life and household that's, I'm not stressing for finances or anything like that. Like why the heck am I not happy? Something's wrong with me. What's seriously wrong with me? And so um, the only thing that popped in my brain at that moment, I'm so glad it did, was maybe I need to like start working out or something. I heard working out, like give you endorphins, maybe getting more active will make me feel better. Um, and so I, <laughs> I got out my Tybo VHS. Like I had to dig through my basement and try to find my VHS player. And I tried that for a little while. It was really crappy. Um, I had bought P90X back in the day and realized Tony Horton's not my jam. I love you, Tony, you're amazing, but I can't do a pull up to save my life. So P90X is just, yes, Billy Blanks. <laughs> Billy Blanks saved my life in college. <laughs> right hook, it was awesome. 
Um, Beachbody should hire him. But then I um, saw an infomercial one night while I was probably nursing my little one, and um, it was Sean T. And I was like, mm, easy on the eyes. It's just like the floor and a TV. Like, I can do that. Um, and so I remember I put it on Facebook and it pops up every year and it's so fun to share, but I was like, does anybody own Insanity? Cause I'm not about to pay 60 bucks for DVDs. Can I borrow them? Um, so I was that girl <laughs> who borrowed these DVDs from a lady at church and I never gave them back and she's my customer, but that's okay. She's got bod now. <laughs> I probably should have paid for her bod just so I could pay her back. Um, so I tried Insanity and I started and I stopped like six different times. I got really defeated. Like you guys know, the first four minutes is brutal. Um, and it was this moment where I was sitting in my basement and I got through the warm up and I was like, I'm going to do this stupid plyometrics workout. Like I'm so frustrated. Um, and I got on my phone and I went on Beachbody's website looking for some sort of help. And I say this because there's probably women out there or men doing the same thing. They might have those DVDs that they got at a yard sale or they bought on Amazon or they borrowed from a friend who are feeling frustrated and they have, they have access to your social media. So making sure that you're being really consistent on social media with your presence and your journey, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, is super important because there's women like me, who's going to go 10 star in your downline, um, that needs your help and needs to hear what your, what your story is, what your reality is, because your reality might match mine. Um, Anyway, so I got on Beachbody. I connected with this chick. I didn't know her. Oh, she's from Utah. She was really nice. She had two kids. She had results with Insanity. And she plugged me into her challenge group. And that's where really the light bulb went off for me. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, there's people that want to love on each other. I would get up in the morning looking forward to jumping into these challenge groups. And I know that Jamie and Kim run incredible challenge groups. And know that your customers that are in there, like, they look forward to it. Somebody like me being in Kim's challenge group would be, it would be heaven five years ago. I'd have been like, Kim is my best friend. She don't know it, but we are best friends right now. Um, and so those customers that, that are in there, you just don't know what potential they might have. And I was one of them. So I was in this challenge group. My heart, my soul, everything was set on fire. And I said, I signed up as a coach like seven weeks in. And I said, you know what? I'm going to summit. I don't know what it is. I don't know how much it costs to get there but I'm going. And I had like this baller mentality. And then I looked at plane tickets and it was like $500. So I was like, honey, <laughs> I got to go make 500 bucks so I can go to summit. And so I made it a point to make sure I sold enough challenge packs so that I could go to summit and not take from my family's budget. It's so funny to say that now because now I'm a multiple six figure earner and that's hilarious, but I'm so thankful that I made that like kind of gut riching commitment to myself to be at Summit. And so if you guys have not committed to be at Summit, be there because it is game changing for your business. Your team culture is already incredible. So you're going to go in there and be like, hey, we're part of the Fitzpatrick's team. We're baller. Um, <laughs> so I went to Summit and I saw all these people and I was like, oh my, I'm up in the nosebleeds, by the way, at the MGM Grand, the very top. And um, people were winning awards and telling their stories. And I just sat there and I was like, you're just like me. Like, I can do what they do. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Like, Lindsay was a stay-at-home mom, and Melanie was a stay-at-home mom. Like, hearing all these stories, this is actually before Melanie was really a big deal, and um, kind of envisioned myself in their shoes and said, why not me? Why not? Like, it's my decision if I want to do it or not. I just need to make that choice. And so I left Summit with all the resources and tools and really confused, not sure what to do, no upline support, and said, I'm all in. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm going to fail forward and I'm going to make this work. And so I jumped in and built a team. And five years later, with dedication, continuing to grow and learn from people and, and evolve and change, which is kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, because the game has changed a little bit. Social media has changed and you got to learn to evolve and adapt as things start to change. I've been able to create a sustainable business that I've doubled my husband's income. He's high level government. And I've been able to double his income, which gives us the freedom, not necessarily to be like baller in some huge house, but it gives us the freedom to travel and to give our kids experiences. It's, it's priceless. It really is. Um, so that's a little bit of my story. So you can kind of realize that I didn't come from like some cool network marketing background with amazing graphic design 
whatever. I had to learn. My first videos were terrible. I don't know if you guys have seen my iMovie. Like oh, that's my kind of icon thing is my workout videos. They were horrible when I first started. Horrible. Like, like literally it was just my feet going across the screen and then a selfie at the top. So bad. Um, I showed my team once and they're like, Ooh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, let me share my screen. If you guys, Oh, there's Kim in the car. I see you boo. <laughs> You have such a hot wife, Jamie. Aren't you so proud? <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I digress. Let me share my screen. So you also don't have to be super organized to run this business because this is my desktop. <laughs> Let me just scare the crap out of you for a second. Anybody who's OCD, I don't even know what not connected to the device means, but whatever. That looks so familiar. Wow. <laughs> so bad. My assistant like almost vomits when she sees that. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, so. Some of the stuff I'm going to go over today, you might have seen it, might have seen at Summit. You might have seen um, on the presentation in the back office from corporate, but I, I want to elaborate on a few things, skim through a few things, and definitely go into questions because that's where a lot of people um, tend to learn because they have particular questions. So we're going to set up your social media platforms for baller status. I think that it's key to make sure that you really have good information and, and a good vibe. I mean, Kim and Jamie, I looked at y'all's yesterday. And I was like, oh man, I need to like make quotes and like put my logo on it, make it all like flow nicely. <laughs> Cause you guys, it looks incredible. Um, I'm gonna talk about content creation. I think that's something that some of us get insecure about. Like, I don't have anything to talk about. Show you ways to overcome that. Do's and don'ts to make your, your Insta super fly. Um, marketing plans so that you can duplicate yourself quickly. So you have a plan, and then when you sign coaches, they have a plan that is really um, duplicatable. Call to actions and my favorite apps. And I put shh, because these are like, I'm just kidding. I, once I did, went live on Melanie Mutra's page, like everybody's using the apps now. Um, so this is kind of an old picture, but um, this is the difference between a uh, personal IG page. I'm going to focus more on IG because honestly, I, I mean, I hit Success Club 40 plus on average a month and it's all coming from Instagram. It's not coming from Facebook. So I'm not saying to diss Facebook, but I definitely want um, you to focus on the what's trending right now. And so um, there are two different types of profiles. There is um, the basic profile personal and then there is a business profile. I highly recommend the business because it allows you to really see insights to your audience um, and do ads and things like that or promote on your IG wall. Um, another thing that I'm going to add to this training that I haven't yet and I want to tell you guys first is the bio really needs to be specific. My bio here sucks. It's terrible. Um, and I'm working on, um, with one of my, one of my girls who's really creative on how to make it super intentional. I feel like your bio needs to tell people how exactly they're going to connect with you. Um, and once I get mine down, I will send it to Kim and say, this is how people need to start making their bio. It doesn't need to be, um, pointless beach lover. Like who cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> I'm a beach lover. Um, donut and cupcake obsessed. Makes no impression whatsoever. Um, and so making it super impactful. Once I get this complete, and I'm actually going to do a training around how to make the most impactful bio possible, um, I will give that to Kim and Jamie, and that's in the works right now. All right, so this is the part that makes the biggest bang for your buck. And if you guys not have not done this as a team, I highly recommend it. It is my favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, it, I, I don't want to say it's a personality test because it's not. It is... It is, okay, so most things like Myers-Briggs and Jim test and um, the different type of personality tests that you might have heard in your jobs or with Beachbody, those are focused mainly from a psychological perspective, like what your personality is based on how a psychologist would dissect you. This particular quiz is focused on how somebody would brand you. And I'm like, hello. I need to know that. So it's called howtofascinate.com, and I believe Beachbody has a discount code. And it's just Beachbody. Um, but I actually messaged Carl as soon as I found this. I'm like, you've got to tell the network about this. This is amazing. And so I don't, I can't see you guys. I'm looking at my own screen with no share of hands or anything, but hopefully this is new. <laughs> if not, I'm sorry. Um, but the way the fascination quiz works is you take it and it tells you exactly how you are best perceived in your audience eyes. 
how you are best perceived in your audience eyes. And it also tells you how you are least, what's the word, least best? I don't even know how to say that. How people don't like to, how people don't like to see you. And that's huge because we're such, we're in such a network where we like follow coaches and I see so many people doing Jatana dance moves in the camera that might not be their jam. And that might not be what their audience really receives. Well, it might make their, leave their audience feeling uncomfortable. And so taking this, let me know exactly how people best perceive me. So I can speak from mine. I'm a people's champion. If you find a people's champion, hire them immediately as a coach and like pour into them because people's champions are Carl Deichler is the same as me. We're exactly the same in terms of our um, passion and power and he's power and passion. Um, so I make my coaches take this when they first sign up, like where are my people's champions at? Cause like, I know y'all are ready to take off. Um, same with when, when you find rubies, but, um, this, for example, my fascination personality is people receive me well when I'm very highly energized and I'm smiling and I'm happy and I'm goofy and I'm, and I'm approachable. Like if I don't ever feel that way, I can't post on social media because it's not going to be received well. Um, and there are times when obviously we all have these times where we feel in our minds and we feel like in a, even Kim talked about meditation. Like I can't post about any of that because people will not receive it well. How many of you have ever been accused of the RBF? And I, I don't curse, so resting B face. If you have, you're probably giving your audience or your friends in your social networks um, a piece of your personality that's not received well. And so for me, when I'm quiet and reserved and in my head or insecure, my audience thinks I'm just not a nice person. They don't, they don't receive it well. And so I have to be really careful even today when I was posting, I had this really cute, like seductive, like picture of me with my workout and I was all like sexy and cute. And I was like, um, yeah, like I think this looks good, but I'm guessing my audience will think I'm a brat because <laughs> they want to see me going crazy and smiling. Um, and so I picked the smiley picture, even though I let thought the other one, my abs look better. Um, so taking this quiz is really going to help you define, um, how people best perceive you and how people best, how your brand is, is most impactful. I use this analogy at summit and it was, it's freaking hilarious. Um, picture a freaky Friday moment between Melanie Mitro and I, I mean, if, if I were to jump on my Insta stories and go, all right guys, today is business tip Tuesday or say even for Kim, Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about our um, morning meditation and what really um, impacted my heart this morning. My audience would look at me and go, um, are you <laughs> like, are you going to start dancing while you're doing it? Cause I don't really like follow you for that reason. Like stop being serious. That's weird to me. Um, and same if Melanie Mitro were to jump on the countertop with her Shakeology and turn on Luke Bryan with Matt standing there going, Oh yeah, go Melanie you know, the money thing <laughs> and dance. So their shake with music playing in the background. You guys would all be like, Oh my gosh, this is disturbing. Like what is going on here? Like Melanie probably looks cute dancing. I'm sure, but it's not her brand, but both of us work perfectly in our own wheelhouse. Melanie does her thing. Jatana's wild crazy does her thing and they both work. So you have to be really careful when you start following other coaches that you admire not to emulate what won't work for you. You've got to see in your wheelhouse. So I highly recommend you guys taking this as a team and kind of breaking it down. Here's a little tip with not spending too much money on this because I think it's $50 for the full analysis. I recommend you getting it either way. It's a tax write off. But if you go into Google and say you're the, the, uh, the blue chip, I don't know. That's one of the things on there. You can go into Google and put the blue chip fascination quiz. And if it's a very popular one, um, you can actually find a copy of the whole analysis on Google images. So just a little tip there to not pay full price. All right. Um, if you guys haven't used link, link tree, this is great, a great way to bring people to other parts, whether it's Facebook, um, or it is an application for your challenge group or your coaching opportunity. Um, so if you don't have the swipe up option, this is another way to say, go to the link in my bio and check out my new coach application or 
my challenge group opportunity. So this is something a lot of the coaches in the network are using now. Some of my favorite, let me take a sip of my flavored beer. This is 6%, it's not too bad. All right, hold on. And it's like cranberry. Mm, okay. So my favorite um, apps, and I get this question probably about 300 times a day in my DMs. My DMs are horrific, they're crazy. Um, so these are my favorite apps. When I make those little videos, if you don't follow me on IG, please go follow because you will start to see this pattern of what I do on a daily, monthly, weekly basis. It doesn't impact your business at all. People don't know you're following me kind of thing like they are with like pages. Um, but at least watch my stories. And with my stories, these are things I like to use. Hype Type's amazing because you can change the font, you can add music, and you can speed up your video. And I'm telling you, we look so much cuter and cooler <laughs> when we speed up our workout than when we try to do it in slow motion. It's all a visual thing. I know Joel has given us flack, <laughs> I love you Joel, but he's given us flack for speeding things up, but I'm like, Joel, you gotta understand, people are inspired by the intensity of it, they're not inspired by the like, oh my gosh, she's really struggling for that last push up. Um, and so I speed up my video, I add cool fonts, and I can add whatever music I want um, you could put in like the word shake and every song with the word shake is going to come up. Um, country girl, shake it or Polaroid, shake your Polaroid picture or whatever. It's going to come up and you can add it to your video. Um, obviously Snapseed is kind of the it thing for making your pictures pop. I noticed that I think that's what Kim and Jamie, actually I learned Snapseed from Jamie because I messaged him like, I don't know, it was like a year ago, two years ago, maybe a year ago, and said, wait, how do you make your pictures look so cool? Um, and so Drama 2 is my go-to, and uh, Word Swag has, actually has an IG um, crop that you can use to add cooler fonts to your stories rather than the standard um, IG fonts that are given. All right, um, this one is probably not as important, but I'm gonna fly through it. I added a circle to my picture on my IG stories and I just used um, Photoshop. Grab this little circle, pop your actual headshot into it and put it as your IG profile picture and it'll put a double circle around your IG picture. I think it makes you stand out. It makes people think that they haven't watched your story yet and so they'll go and watch it again even though they've already watched it. And sometimes that double exposure really helps them um, do whatever call to action you're putting on there that day. Geotagging is huge. You need to geotag every single story you do, no matter what. And I don't know, but you guys, some of you guys might be in uh, Canada, but Toronto loves me for some reason. You can see it on here. Like I tag Toronto all the time. I don't know why, because I've, I've, well, I do know why. I have experimented with different cities and I, for some reason, get the biggest amount of viewership through Toronto. Um, I don't know if I've ever signed a coach from Toronto, so that might say one thing, but um, geotagging every story. You can hide it behind emojis. You can hide it behind things. You can make it really teeny tiny and make it translucent so that people don't know that you're geotagging it, but you will start to show up in the population of stories for that area. Um, and a little fun story about that, I was actually line dancing out in Centerville, Virginia, and I tagged that I was in Centerville. And this girl messaged me three weeks later and was like, I'm not trying to be a creeper, but I've been following you for three weeks now. And um, like, I love to line dance, but you're totally inspiring me. I don't know what it is you do, and I'm not trying to be weird, but like, one, I'd like to be your friend. Two, I'd like to go out line dancing. And oh, by the way, my husband's a military, in the military, so he's gone and deployed, and I really don't have any friends around here because we just moved here, and I'm going, Oh my gosh, she doesn't know it. She's gonna be my future coach. Because <laughs> not only does she love the things that I love, we have a passion for going out line dancing and country music, but she's a military wife looking for community. I mean, that's kind of a perfect sign for at least starting with a challenge group. So that's one of the things that I love about geotagging. So don't be lazy, geotag everything and start monitoring which cities do well. So here are some of my favorite apps. Um, obviously, I just talked about hype type. I use cut story to make longer clips into fitting into IG story 15 second clips. Um, I use the app over to create cool layouts. Like if I want to put my, um, my logo on a, another image that has words on it, 
I can put my logo on there. Or um, I have used, um, I think it was Unfold, where I had previously showed what Energize had done for me that morning. And then I showed myself doing like curls or something with the picture of my Energize that's pointed down to me working out saying, look, it's working. So you can add a picture from a previous story with the video of your current story and layer it. It's really, really cool. And that's with Unfold. And then, of course, InShot is kind of the go-to for a lot of people now. But InShot really helps you put things in the right frame. Um, it does a lot of stuff. You guys go into InShot and play around. You can add borders. You can add different emojis and GIFs, stickers, all kinds of stuff. You can also add your voice over videos. Um, so these are my main um, apps that I use for my IG account. And then obviously the highlights are kind of a really cool way to create albums for your audience to come check you out. You have all those little, hopefully you have stalkers that come check out your account and you want them to be able to see a glimpse into your world, whether it's coaching, your challenge group. Um, if you have something outside of that, like for instance, my coach Afton, she's like a Disney freak. So she puts Disney stuff in there or she has an art life kind of thing going on. Um, but making sure you have this set as well. And I'm getting ready to change all of mine because they're a hot mess right now. But doing this will really allow your audience to come check you out, read your bio, and say, let me check out these little albums she has here. And so utilize those to be able to speak whatever you want to speak to the people who are coming and don't know you at all. All right, content ideas. This is some of the stuff that I went over at Summit. Um, so I will not like go super in depth. I don't want to like bore you to death, but call to actions, you guys, you should be doing call to actions daily and they can be subliminal call to actions. They don't have to be straight up like, Hey, my challenge group starts on August 20th. Do you want to join? It can be a call to action that people don't realize you are asking them to take action. Um, and so, and that's why I say watch my stories because you'll start picking up on when I do that. But you should be doing them on a daily basis, whether it's a straight call to action or you subliminally or breadcrumbing, whatever word you want to use, some sort of action you want them to take. And that could be new product launches, coach trainings, challenge groups, sneak peeks, whatever it is. Q&A styles. This is my favorite. You guys, if you're not doing this, and even now they have the question box. Two things that I love to do every Monday. I just started this. <laughs> it's fun though, because it allows your audience to get to know you as a person and to ask you whatever they want to ask you. And I'm like freaking so transparent. I talk about things that I didn't think I'd ever talk about, but it's hilarious. Um, every Monday it's, you know, I post a picture of me and I tell them, ask me whatever you want. Ask Jatana a question. And I answer all of their questions. Another one that I do is tell me something you assume about me. Um, and so they tell me all the things that I can answer whether or not, and don't just do, don't just do videos nonstop answering every single question because visually and mentally you lose, people get lost. Grab old pictures. Like I assume you were a cheerleader in college. I went and grabbed a picture of me when I was in college cheering and I put it on there. It's such a great way for your audience to be warm up to you and you, they instantly start becoming a part of your warm market because they feel like they've. They know you, they know your family, they know your background because they've been watching your stories and Q and A's are huge. Um, I would say pick one day a week where you're gonna do this type of storyline and it takes a lot of time because you'll get like 15 people asking you. If you're my case, I got 300 questions. I had to sit there and scroll through all these questions and pick like the solid ones that I wanted to address. Um, diary style stories are great. Things like work with me Wednesday. Bring somebody on your work day. What does it look like when you wake up in the morning? You make your shake. Um, you get ready for work. You drop your kids off at school. And then you, you know, you're on your lunch break and you're going through your power hour because you want to check in with all your challengers. Um, or your stay-at-home mom and how your kiddo is out playing, you know, soccer in the cul-de-sac and you're sitting in your lawn chair. I'm just like making up scenarios here sitting in your lawn chair and you're working your business on your laptop, show with them one day a week what a day in the life of you looks like. So that when they look at your lifestyle, they can say, huh, that's interesting. Like she's going to all these events and she has this really cool team and she's obviously sticking with her fitness re regiment, yet her life is just like mine. Going back to Kim's statement, there's a lot of people 
in your reality. And that's a great way for you to show what your reality is with beach body infiltrated in that or intermixed, interweaved in that. Contextual stories are amazing. Um, people love to feel like you're adding value to them. If you're not adding value on a daily basis in your stories, you're gonna lose people. People want to take. <laughs> they want information. They want to know what you're good at. And for me, it's like lashes and um, lighting and makeup and things like that. So there's things about you that people would come ask you for advice on. What is it that your best friend or your close friends would come and say, I need advice on, I don't know, how to change my oil or how to make a bouquet of flowers or um, how to put on a smoky eye, eye makeup. There's something that your friends would come and ask you about, and those are great stories to add value to your audience, and we all have them. Um, one of my favorites, if you're a girl and you like fashion, like him and I do, outfit of the day, and I tag all the places that I got my outfit, and people will screenshot, and they'll message me, like, oh my gosh, those Michael Kors shoes are so cute. You got those jeans at Kohl's, they're adorable. Um, that interaction is actually really good for your algorithms. Instagram loves it. They pay attention to the fact that people are interacting with you, that people are screenshotting your stories. That impacts your algorithm. You want people to screenshot things. And so giving value is not only going to make your audience want to continue to come back, but they also are going to feel like, you know what, this chick has something like cool to say, and I'm learning something from her, so they will continue to come back. And it helps your algorithms. Um, another one of my favorites is talking to the camera while doing something. I tell my new coaches this all the time, and they're like, I don't know how to go live, because live is really going to help you with um, Facebook and IG, because Facebook loves the fact that you can keep people's attentions for long periods of time, and so does IG. So if you're really nervous about going live, this is my trick. Um, Get good lighting, obviously, and this is one of the things that I've made a staple of doing. I get my Amazon packages in the mail, whether I ordered this lip gloss or I ordered this new iPhone thing attachment. I get three boxes in the mail, and I set them on my desk, and I go live, and I open these packages in front of my audiences. I got my phone propped up, my computer propped up, I got Facebook and IG going at the same time. And the whole time, I'm capturing people's attention. They're staying there all I don't know, 13 or 400 of them are watching and they're staying there because they want to see what's inside the box, which is great for my algorithm because Facebook and IG is going, she can keep people's attention. Let's continue to get more people in front of her because we want people to stay on our apps. That's at the end of the day, it's business, right? Um, and so while I'm opening this package and keeping their attention, I'm talking about kind of breadcrumbing a challenge group or coaching, or something cool that my team and I are about to go do. So that while they're watching the package being open, keeping their attention, satisfying social media algorithms, I'm also filling their brains with information that I want them to know. So that's a great way to get a little bit more comfortable with going live and actually keep their attention at the same time. And then polls are amazing. Um, you know, we, I, I don't do yes and no. I do positive and positive. Sign up with me, or I'm ready to go now, or I need more information. Those are the kind of things that I like to put on polls. Ooh, there's a lot. All right, top tips, quality over quantity, okay? Um, nobody likes uh, excessive amount of stories with not a lot of content. It becomes mundane, boring, and they swipe away from you. Um, be cohesive. If somebody randomly were to come to your page, Will it make sense to them? Will they be able to pick on exactly what your vibe is and what you're trying to say? So don't be really super sporadic. Have a theme and um, be cohesive with your story. Be consistently on your brand, your visuals. I try to stick with color themes even. Um, emojis, the same emojis that I use or the same gifts that I use. I'm really trying to be consistent on my brand. Um, create engagement. Ask for replies. Ask for them to answer polls. Ask them to screenshot the next story. Here's another one you can do. Um, you want to do a coaching call to action. Say, you know what? I am looking for this kind of chick on my team. And obviously not all of you guys are looking for chicks, but I am. I'm looking for this kind of chick on my team. If this is the kind of person that you know, I want you to forward them this next story. And then I go in the next story. I'm like, hey, girl. All right. 
your girlfriend thinks you would be absolutely an incredible match for me. And I am so excited to get to know you. I've had people forward my stories to their friends saying, you've got to pair up with Hannah. You would be so good at what she does. And so I'm meeting complete strangers. Um, avoid talking forever. Oh my gosh. I am like, it's my pet peeve to watch a story where it goes on and on and on and on. And I, this is what I do. I go tap. Okay. That's good. Tap. Okay. She's still talking. Okay. Nope. Nope. Swipe away. Shalene Johnson. I'm sorry, love. You're amazing. But she talks a lot <laughs> and she loses me. Um, so avoid talking forever. I would say three frames on a topic and move on. Um, cause you want them to, you want to keep their attention. You don't want them to swipe away and go to the next story. Um, be unique, obviously keep their attention is kind of another same thing that I talked about a minute ago. Um, be unique. All everybody's, all the coaches are on IG. How are you any different? How are you different than me? How are you different from Jamie and Kim? You know, you've got to be unique in who you are. And that goes back to that fascination quiz. Um, and then speak to your avatar. Speak to that person that gets you, that understands who you are and who you want to be, because that will best resonate and make create the, the biggest impact and people actually take action on what you're asking them to take action on. If you speak directly to, for me, I speak directly to the mom who's sitting on the couch, eating Chick-fil-A, watching Good Morning America, who's about 10 pounds overweight never got their body back after having a baby, is really frustrated because she's bored with life, but she knows she has a ton of a potential. That's who I talk to. And I do not deviate outside of that because I cannot speak powerfully to anybody else but that girl. And that girl signs up with me every time without hesitation because she gets me and I get her and I know how to help solve her issues and the things that she's struggling with. All right. Definitely come check me out. Girl, hey girl. Um, one of my favorite quotes is when you know the conversations in your customer's head, you've won. When you know the conversations in the customer's head, you've won. And that's huge. That goes into like pain points. And so when you're posting on any form of social media or um, your stories, you got to remember those, those pain points and those pleasure points. Because those are the things that are going to really make somebody take action. Um, but so let's go over some do's. I always put that quote in there because I think it's super important. Um, but do's, guys, make your pictures like intriguing or, or make somebody question what is it she's doing. Do not just, and I'm going to go over don'ts. So let's not go there. Make them intriguing. Make the colors pop. Utilize those apps that take you literally five seconds to pop a picture in there and make it look a little bit more eye capturing and so that they don't just scroll right past you make them ask a question of like what is going on in her life right now she's got paper plates there's plastic plates on her face and these things around her legs like what just happened to her um, so they want to keep watching so make sure you um, share your journey stay on topic have fun be creative do call to actions, be super consistent and just add small pieces of your day but most importantly Keep people curious on what it's all about. And I'm going to show you some tips on how to do that in a minute. What not to do. <laughs> this is horrible. Like, this is really bad. If you're doing this, please like stop immediately and take a moment, step back and say, okay, how can I make this a little bit more curious for people? Um, bad lighting. Stand in front of a window. Get a lamp. I've got a lamp right here. Get it. Go buy a Diva light. A Diva light actually let me plug this and I don't get any perks for plugging this. Socialite is baller. I thought it was like a gimmick on social media, but I bought the Socialite and um, it's in my gym right now, but it's amazing. It's called Socialite. I don't even have the name of it. But anyways, um, I bought their ring light and the lighting is much better than even the Supernova Diva light. But invest in that. It's a tax write-off. You'll use it daily. Um, and then be careful with sticker placement. Like be mindful of whether or not something is going to capture somebody's eyes or if it's just going to be a big old fat distraction. And the dumb penguin with 17 degrees adds no value to my story whatsoever. T25 done. They're like, I don't know what T25 is. So I don't care that you just, that it's done. Like, is that your tax form or what? <laughs> right. And so it's not going to intrigue them or make them curious about what I'm doing. Um, and then 
putting products like straight up in people's faces means, hi, my name's Bunny Jatana, and I'm, is that, is that a bunny or a dog? I don't know. It's like a French bulldog. Um, and I'm trying to sell you something so I can make money. Like, that's all that says. So let's not put those products all up in people's faces. I am all about branding products around me, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's my favorite topic. This is just a simple marketing plan that I did for 80 Day Obsession. I have one now that I just rolled out to my team for our next challenge group. But just be picking one thing a day to really focus on. Um, I call them hard breadcrumbs. I do three stories around it each day. So one day could be accountability, and you do three stories really back to back to back about that particular topic. And giving you, yourself and your coaches this type of setup will allow them to have content. Like, yes, do all the other stuff you do throughout your day. But today, I want you to really emphasize the impact of Energize or Shakeology or whatever that is. But having this type of calendar for yourself will make sure that you're making an impact on something each and every day. And so one of my examples is my mom crack. That's what I labeled it. And I now question myself because it sounds really bad. And it's so funny. I get DM messages and they're like, um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be weird or anything, but like, what's mom crack? Is it legal? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Um, but it's hilarious. And I don't tell them what it is. I don't tell them that it's Beachbody. Um, I say it's my pre-workout and it's what I use to get myself like energized. And I don't even answer that right away. And I'll kind of go, let me explain this slide and then I'll go into how I would respond to somebody DMing me. But um, the first story is me super tired. This is a cause and effect. This is what you want. You want them to see and feel what Energize is doing for you. And so for me, it's 5.48 in the morning. I'm tired. And yes, I wake up with makeup on because I sleep with my makeup on. I think Kim does the same thing. I just wash my face and leave my eye makeup on. And then I put, I put foundation on. It's great. Um, <laughs> but it's 5.48 in the morning. I'm tired. My voice is like this. Hey, guys, I'm getting up. I'm going downstairs to my workout space. I know my girls are waiting on me on the video accountability group. But I'm tired. Next story is, all right, I've got my mom crack. I was a just get this inside of me. I know that I will like slay my workout. I just got to make sure I get this in because this is what helps me get so much energy. The next one, I'm using hike type. I've got Usher playing. I'm dancing like a crazy fool. I put time to slay. And what that does for my audience is it brings them this on this experience, probably while they're laying in bed, staring at their phone going, well, dang, I'm not working out. Like I'm tired. Like she was in the first one. And here she is bouncing around like a crazy fool at 6.05 in the morning. What that does is it tells people what Energize is going to do for them without me even trying to sell them anything. I'm just bringing them on my own personal journey and experience. I say the same thing with beach bars. I've just started eating them because I have to be really careful. My kids have no allergies. Um, but beach bars don't need to be, this bothered me when it came out. Everybody was posting like, it's got 12 grams of protein and five carbohydrates and logos and blah, blah. And your audience is going, ew. Okay, great. You're selling protein bars now. That's cool. Uh, no, like have that beach bar never show the logo. As you can see with my Energize, my Energize is always turned around because people don't know what it is and I want them to come to me. Um, but my beach bars mysteriously pop up. I'm like, I got my, I need to label it something instead of mom, it's not mom crack, but I need to give it a name so that people ask me what that particular thing is. But my mom's snack, I don't know. It needs to have a name. And I did it right before I got on this call. I'm like having my bar, going to jump on a team call. And I probably have three messages in my DMs right now going, okay, what's, what's the bar greeting? And that's what you want. You want people to come to you and be curious about these products that you're using and not feel like you're selling them anything, but that you're, you're, they're working for you and they want, they're intrigued and they want more. And so when people come to me and they're like, what is mom crack? I say, oh my gosh, oh, it's the best thing ever. First of all, I get incredible energy for my workouts. Do you work out? Like what kind of workouts do you do? Let's start digging into them and their story, not focusing on energized. I don't want to sell them pre-workout. I want to sell them the whole experience of my challenge group of BOD, of Shakeology, and yes, mom crack. Because all my clients, they get a challenge pack and they get energized. That's because that's what I share on a daily basis. Um, and so when people come to you, go back in and start asking them questions about what are they doing? What do they need it for? Why are they curious? 
Um, and then you can start filling their needs with all the other solutions that we have. And then these are just some examples of my call to actions and how I utilize those apps from previous, um, kind of making them a little bit more professional. You guys, I had just worked out. I threw on a cute sweater. I got a white wall behind me in my gym. I put my Diva Light on my face. I did half my face with a pretty filter and took a picture of me pointing to a wall. Popped it into Word Swag, put some cool graphics on there, and able to do a call to action that is super professional and cute. Um, and so that's, I always go through a curiosity, like I'm gonna tell you the next morning when the group's starting or what the big announcement is. Then I tell them the theme, tell them what they're gonna get. I do a, a take action, whether it's swipe up if you have more than 10,000 followers or go to the link in my bio or send me a DM right here. I gave away a prize and then I did one more sweep through of take action. And that's the way I did a call to action for a challenge group. Um, and everybody has FOMO, fear of missing out. And so I do this a lot and it looks different now. This is the way I did it about last year. Um, but I do put the names on a list and I start to fill them up as I hustle in my inbox and my follow-ups to start filling my challenge group. And so as I start to begin to fill my challenge group that day, I'll give my goal of 10 people in one day to sign up for my challenge group. That's 10 challenge packs. That's success club 20 in one day. That's what I do every single month. And it's an intense focus and a call to action that I'm doing on my stories. And I start listing it out and it gives you an accountability of like, all right, I have Kaylin and nads.tx and TK, whatever, all these weird names. And you put them on a list and you're like, I still have six more. I got to keep hustling until I fill those other six spots because I made a goal of 10 people in my challenge group. And so putting it out there also gives people that fear of like, wait a minute, everybody else is doing it. And that's why I screenshot all these messages in my DMs where they're like, I want in, I'm in. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Um, I'm ready to bring on 2018. Screenshot those things so that your audience can see they're not the only weirdo that's interested in your challenge group. And people feel validated when they're like, okay, I'm not the only person that's actually really intrigued. So I'm not being duped into something. This is real. Um, so FOMO is amazing for your stories. But most importantly, you guys, don't be vanilla. Like don't, don't blend in with the crowd. You've got to stand out, which means you have to be authentically you. You've got to figure out what your brand is based on that fascination quiz and stick with it. Be super intentional every time you put content out there. Have fun and be creative with those apps and be follow worthy. Like, be follow worthy because there's no reason to put content out there if people don't want to come back and continue to watch you. Whew. All right. Where y'all at? I can't even see your faces. <laughs> wow. Can I, can I answer any know. questions? Holy cow. Sorry, I went really fast too. No, that's okay. That was a ton of info. That's one that, uh, and I'll say this to anyone, any new coaches or even well, older coaches, like watch that team call again when I post the recording. Um, you're not expected to know all of that now. That's, that's information Jatan has accrued and tried. And, and my advice is like, pick a couple things to try, try that, and then move on to something else and try some other things. I mean, I love the list idea. That's, it's amazing because FOMO does work. And I loved what you just said. It's like people want to know that other people are interested in it too. So they're not the only one like messaging you. So if you're showing that other people are doing what they want to do, that's, that's massive. Yeah. That's a massive tip. One thing I was going to ask you, Jatana, so you geotag, are you hashtagging your stories as well? I do. I have a hashtag challenge going on right now. It's on dance with, or dance with Jatana challenge. Um, and my challengers are doing it. And some of my coaches are doing it. And sometimes coaches in the network are doing it. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about that is, especially for my challengers, is they're tagging me in their stories, which brings more traffic and more eyes on me. Um, and so doing fun little things like that really will, um, help get more traffic to your page. Cool. Yeah. Okay, we got time for a couple questions. You can either put them in the chat or take yourself off of mute. Anyone? Come on. Don't be scared. <laughs> it was a lot of information and I talk really fast. <laughs> um, but you can also rewatch it. You guys, if you're not capitalizing on stories, like you're missing 
a huge influence opportunity. Um, well, goals are huge. And the new questionnaire thing is that's massive. Cause that this whole business guys, like we always say, it's not about psychology. It's not about, it's not even about fitness. Yeah. We're improving people's lives. It's about happiness and stuff, but it really comes down to if they know who you are as a person, they're going to trust you more mm -hmm. and be willing to commit to enter this like sacred relationship of you trying to get them to a place that they need help with. Right. Whilst everyone's in pain and they need you to take them over that hump into the accountability group where they can start to change how they feel. That only happens unless they trust and know you. And that's why on, on stories, it's like those polls and that new questionnaire option is massive. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to do. You don't, you don't have to come up with content for it. They ask you the questions that you get to answer. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and I mean, and you can pull up old stuff. Like they get, one, they get to know you or they start asking you about your meal plan or what you're eating or what's in your shake. I mean, it's, it's golden. There's some questions in the chat. Yes. How many stories do you post a day? Um, it depends. I'm more of a go with the flow kind of person, a natural, like, Sometimes I'll be really intentional with a call to action. Like I have a challenge group that starts on August 20th. So in the next two weeks, you're going to start seeing me breadcrumb and you're going to start seeing me do those FOMO type posts. Um, and then sometimes I just, my kid is trying to ride a bike and he puts a snow I don't know if you saw it today, but James put on like a full on snowsuit and then said that was his armor to ride his bike. And I'm like, this is content right here. This is freaking hilarious. Um, and so sometimes our kids do really funny things and I'm doing like 27 stories in one day. Um, but my goal is just to bring people throughout my day. It doesn't have to be um, super intense like that. How much time do you take to edit one ice um, for your Insta story? One pick for your Insta story. Um, I know my filters and I know which filters work in which places in my house. So take some time to figure out in my gym with my light on me, I use drama too because I have a lot of light on me and it looks great. It, upstairs, I use a different filter and I know exactly what I'm going to use. Take that like 10 minutes to figure that out and then just use it every time and be consistent with it. Titana. Yes. Oh, is she from London? <laughs> Portsmouth, close. Um, the that fascinate.com mm -hmm. I had a quick look whilst you were talking and there's a, a free one when you go on there mm -hmm. is that just like a basic profile and then you pay in to go in and go in more depth because yeah. I struggle to see what people see in me so to, <laughs> that, that sounds really bad for I do so I, I'm just interested in doing that to kind of focus and I struggle with doing lives as well so if I know what people see then Mm -hmm. Some people say that they've been watching me and, you know, they're really close to getting on board and, and I have no idea what even it is that they've seen that they like. Mm -hmm. Well, take that test, whatever your results are, go and Google and see if the full analysis is already on there because people post their analysis and you can get a copy of it. If, it's, if you can't find it on Google, I think the Beachbody code is just Beachbody and you get a discount, but... Honestly, I think the 50 bucks is worth the full. And I read, me and my husband, we sat down, we read the whole thing for both of us. And he's like, listen, you can't be mystique. People don't like mystique Jatana. People like <laughs> crazy Jatana. So even though I might think a picture is like super cute and good, my audience won't like it. <laughs> so I'm very mindful and careful of that. Thank you. Absolutely. Jatana, you brought so much knowledge, my friend. It was so cool. It's so great. You know, you, you're such a leader in the network and it's so cool watching you on story. You know, a lot of people, you know, look up to you. And I think, you know, some of the things that really resonated for me, and I think guys, it's a really good takeaway is exactly what Jatana said. It's like, you know, if Melanie Mitchell was about to get on a counter and start dancing and shimmying, she would look cute for sure, but it's so not on her brand. And I think you really touched on an important part, as many of our coaches are new, is to be excited about discovering what your brand is. Don't be fearful of that. And it's really important to listen to that because so often we actually judge ourselves saying, like, Kate, you're like, gosh, I don't know if they're in that interesting or what people see in me or how... But you guys, we are all unique, incredible humans with many talents that we just sometimes have to come out of our own shell to share. And I just think you touched on that so well tonight, Jatana. And, you know, you gave everybody... Guys, it's like... 
the business really relies on a couple things. It relies on belief, it relies on hope, and it relies on you digging deep into your own self because exactly what Jamie just said, this isn't about selling a shake or a product. People don't care that you work out. They care why you work out. They care who you are. They care that your son wears an, a snowsuit with armor and that his mom like gives the permission for this child to grow up beautifully and in their own way. That's leading into a lens of Jatana as a parent. That isn't about selling. That is about sharing who she is organically. And that shit, you can't buy. You want to partner with people that are real and that you want to, you, you can see through and you can be partners with. So don't, don't second guess yourself guys and don't second guess your potential and don't second guess your worth and don't second guess how important you are and how much of an impact you're going to make. Cause sometimes that's when we think all oh, that story is not good. I'm not going to post it, but how do you know the, it's that one person you might touch? That's the biggest thing I think that coaches can miss sometimes you're so worried about posting interesting stuff when it's and you, you get so scared about posting stuff about you and your life but that's that's the stuff that people connect with they don't yeah. it, perfect is boring like and then people want to connect with real people who struggle with stuff who show the weird stuff that you do like i always say we're all a little dysfunctional boy all of us we've all got the little idiosyncrasies and weird stuff about us that's what people want to see they really do they, they and that's the gold of this business is you can kind of be yourself yeah. anything you want to be and no one really cares yeah. because we're all a little messed up well and i think it's a beautiful thing I, if it wasn't for this whole beach body journey i don't think i and, and you said it on my call last night i didn't know the woman i wanted to be i didn't and now i'm like i know exactly who i am i love country music i love my big old jeep i dance around and act crazy i drink tito's and soda sometimes i love health and fitness like i know exactly who I am, and it wouldn't have been discovered if I wasn't on this journey. It's just really priceless. So, awesome one, stuff. one last question. Oh. When you first started with Beachbody, how did you handle the negative comments that came with posting about what you were doing and who you are? Um, that's gonna come no matter what you do, okay? And I think it's, um, gosh, what's the guy's name? Brandon Bouchard that might have said it in one of his videos, but he was talking about haters, and he said that Haters are, there's usually like one or two, and then there's like a thousand who love you. If you think about the ratio of that, the one or two are actually the crazy ones. <laughs> They're outnumbered. So like, who cares about the one or two? You gotta go in with the people who love you and who are excited about what you're doing. Um, and so we get so fixated on that because it's a hateful thing, right? And you're like, why are they being so mean? And why don't they love what I'm doing? Why aren't they supporting me? but they're the minority. Why are we focused so much on the minority when it's the one or two people? And you prove them wrong. I, I'm all about that. I'm like, I'm proved wrong. Like you think that I'm a, I'm a scam or I'm in a pyramid scheme. Oh, I just pay my mortgage off. Like I'm killing this business. I'm still super fit. My family's happy and I'm financially free. What are you gonna complain about that? You really have something come at me. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Um, and here's another thing. My brother told me, when I first started this business, you need to post all your fitness stuff on your like page because that's your business page. We don't want to see all that crap on your personal page. Oh, you're a narcissist. All you do is take selfies of yourself. Like he sent me definitions, clinical definitions of narcissism from my brother who I love, who should love me unconditionally. He's now a diamond coach in my team. <laughs> so it had to take me proving to him by my own actions and my own success and commitment and showing up two years later with success for him to go, all right, all right I'm kind of mad at myself because I could have had like a whole downline built underneath me. And now he's a diamond leader on my team. So that's cool. To him. I think we said last call too. It's like you, you'll never be judged by someone more successful than you. Yep. It's my favorite thing to say. So true. Yep. All right. Well, Jatana, thank you. Awesome. Massive, massive love for you. Um, and yeah, it was such an honor to speak on your team call last night. And if you can flip me that recording, I feel like the team could probably use hearing that too. So um, yeah, I thank you very much for your time, your wisdom, your truth bombs, um, and just for you being you. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jatana. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye.